Hello, and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. Today, I am gonna talk about tankering, and what is that as related to aircraft and aircraft dispatch specifically. First, I just wanna do a quick shout out to this video sponsor, listener.io. They provide a safe online space for counseling, especially specific to pilots. So check it out and use my special link in the video description to find out more. And there's a discount code listed for you there as well. So let's talk about tankering. What do we even mean by that word? You'll hear aircraft dispatchers maybe talk about tankering. We are moving fuel that is not needed to be burned during a flight. So we're actually using the aircraft as a means to air move the fuel around. Typically large aircraft actually have some excess fuel capacity. Some of them have very large tanks and you may not need all that fuel for the flight. So we can use the airplane to sometimes move some fuel that we don't intend to burn to move the fuel around to another location. Why would an airline want to do that? Well, one of the biggest reasons why airlines might do that is because of fuel price differences. And I'm gonna unpack an example here at the end with the little numbers thrown in relating to the Boeing 737-300 because I have some data for that aircraft because that's the aircraft we use in the dispatch course that I teach. So the biggest reason I see for tankering that companies will do is fuel price differences. But another reason could be they want to turn the aircraft very quickly, and they do not want to spend time fueling the aircraft. So again, depending on fuel availability, it also could be somewhere you are flying the aircraft to, there is no fuel available. That Hedges does not have that availability for your operation. And in that case, you would also want to make sure that you brought in enough fuel to fly that aircraft back out. So we would meet all the regulatory requirements. For this example, I'm going to use 737-300, like I mentioned, and I'm gonna use some hypothetical numbers for a couple of domestic flights under part 121 rules. If you wanna know more about fuel rules, I've got some other videos, which I will uh, put a link to in the description so you can learn more about that. But let's do a hypothetical price difference. Let's say that our company is buying fuel for 15 cents a gallon less in Boston. Now, I did say 15 cents per gallon. That's because that's how airlines typically buy fuel is by the gallon. But when we look at fuel burns, we typically look at how many pounds of fuel the aircraft is going to burn during its operation or how many pounds of fuel it needs to carry, not gallons. So just wanna say that up front. So in my example, we are going to be going from Boston to Atlanta and then to Orlando, Florida. So the question for my example here is, how much fuel, if we're buying it, it for 15 cents a gallon less in Boston, how much fuel should we bring on the flight from Boston through Atlanta so we don't buy any fuel in Atlanta and we continue through to Orlando? That would be a tankering operation where between Boston and Atlanta, I'm carrying fuel that I don't need to burn for the flight, but I gotta know how much I actually wanna carry so that I have enough when I get to Atlanta and don't have to buy fuel in Atlanta and continuing on to Orlando. So how do you do this? Um, this is a theoretical example. I'll talk about how airlines do it in real life in a little bit, but to answer first, you would flight plan the second leg. So I would run numbers on my flight plan from Atlanta to Orlando. And so again, this is hypothetical 737, 300 numbers, approximate operating weight of 71,000 pounds. we got a payload of 25,000, brings my zero fuel weight to 96,000 pounds. Got plenty of room to put in some extra fuel for that hypothetical scenario. Once we look at what is required to go from Atlanta to Orlando. So those are my buckets there. We have burn off. So that's how much fuel the airplane is going to burn from Atlanta to Orlando. We need an alternate for Orlando. So I'm going to assume 3,500 pounds for that. Perhaps it's, I don't know, Fort Lauderdale or something like that. 
And then a reserve fuel uh, for 737-300 just for very general flight planning. My class uses 4,000 pounds as a 45-minute domestic reserve. So that means if I add up my burn off, my alternate fuel, and my reserve, I would get 12,500 pounds of fuel. That is what I need to have on board in Atlanta to continue to going to Orlando. So then what I will do is calculate my first leg. Okay, so the second leg was Atlanta to Orlando. Now we go back and we say, all right, how much fuel do I need to get from Boston to Atlanta? Okay, so got again a hypothetical payload up here. Doesn't really important for this, but the burn off, it doesn't really matter for my calculation here because I will put enough fuel on board to do this, but I'm going to burn that fuel between Boston and Atlanta. Okay, so that will clearly not be on board in Atlanta. I need an alternate for Atlanta. So I've got 2,000 pounds of fuel allocated for an alternate for Atlanta. And I've got my typical, like I said before, a 45 minute domestic reserve, 4,000 pounds. Okay, so that means assuming I go to Atlanta and they don't burn my alternate fuel because I don't go to my alternate, if I get to Atlanta, I clearly didn't go to the alternate, then I will have 6,000 pounds on board when I get to Atlanta. Okay, so now I just compare what is needed in Atlanta to continue to Orlando with what is on board when I get to Atlanta. So in my hypothetical scenario, I got 6,000 pounds on board, should be on board on arrival in Atlanta. And then we said before we needed some fuel to go from Atlanta to Orlando, clearly. I need 5,000 burn off, 5,000 pounds. I need 3,500 for an alternate, but remember I said 2,000 was on board already from Boston to Atlanta because I didn't use that alternate fuel. And then 4,000 of reserve, but again, that's already on board because I didn't use that either when I went Boston to Atlanta. So I can adjust my buckets here, basically. I've taken and, and done, said, all right, well, I've already got 2,000 of my 3,500 alternate on board when I got there. The reserve is already on board. The burn off I definitely need to have. And so if you add up your numbers from my Atlanta to Orlando leg, all right, I'm gonna make sure I put 5,000 pounds for the burn off and an extra 1,500 pounds, put these things on board in Boston, put that fuel on board, because the reserve is basically a wash, it's already on board. And so that means in Boston, I need to add 6,500 pounds extra, and I would put that on in a extra, sometimes on the flight, on the dispatch release, it's labeled extra, sometimes it could be labeled tanker, but somehow I put on extra five, 6,500 pounds in Boston for the purpose of moving the fuel to Atlanta and then in Atlanta, not buying any fuel and being able to continue on to Orlando. So let's actually look at this um, from the perspective of what does an airline actually do? Typically they are going to use a computerized flight plan program. So um, what they actually do is the computer will typically have everything loaded in of all the freight price differences for different places that that airline can buy fuel. And the computer can be programmed to tell the dispatcher when to tanker and when not to tanker because it does cost money to move fuel around. So for an example, for this example, if you look at the cruise fuel consumption charts, and this is again, just 737, 300 numbers I have. If you increase the burn off, so I'm gonna increase my burn off by three to 4% per hour if I carry 5,000 pounds extra weight. If you calculate that out, unfortunately, it seems like you need to be assuming $3 a gallon, we don't really start saving any money if we're paying $3 a gallon until about 30 cents a gallon savings. So 
the 15 cents a gallon that we were saying we're saving in Boston is actually going to cost money to fly that fuel around. So it probably wouldn't really save us money. Now, if we were saving 30 cents a gallon and we paid $3 a gallon for that gas, then we would start to save money. But like I mentioned, a computerized flight plan system may be optimized to do that for you. The dispatcher is not going to be needed to do that like paper, paper stuff. But what I do want to emphasize is knowing how you can figure out pretty easily by running your second leg first and then putting the extra fuel on board for your first leg. And this is how you can do it. Basically, take a comparison between the two flights, consider your alternate requirements, consider your reserve requirements, consider the fuel that will already be on the airplane, and make sure you put that on board at the first place that you are leaving from. Don't just run the flight plan and then put an extra 12,500 pounds on the flight because as I showed you, we don't need this entire 12,500 pounds in a, uh, to put on in Boston. We actually only need to add in this example, 6,500 pounds extra fuel in Boston for us to be able to do this because my reserve and my alternate, some of that fuel is already on board. So, hope you enjoyed that little explanation of tankering in theory. It's something that might come up on a dispatcher practical exam or on an oral that you might be talking about what is tankering, what is it even about? And so I hope that you have learned something about that. Don't forget to like and subscribe and enjoy more aviation content based on airline and dispatch operations and have a fantastic day.